Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the CX Green Room, where experts in customer experience join us to share their insights and expertise. I'm Greg Thomas from Genesis. Um, today, we're joined in the Green Room by Robert Beasley, Senior Director of Strategic Solutions here at Genesis. And we're going to talk about what's new in workforce management strategies, trends and technologies, the role that AI is playing, and the benefits of taking a more strategic approach to workforce engagement management, or WEM, as I'm sure we'll call it as we go along. Um, Robert, welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. Thank you very much for having me. Um, can you, uh, we'll, we'll start off with a softball question. Uh, can you share with our viewers just a little bit about your background and your role here at Genesis? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll give you the quick and dirty background. Went to school to be a pilot, found myself working in the call center world and never left it. Don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> but that said, I've been in this space for more than 20 years. Uh, I started working at a contact center as an agent in college and find myself working at workforce man in workforce management. Uh, over the last 20 years, I have worked in this space with a number of competitors and a number of roles. Uh, and I've been here for about five years, a little more than five years. Uh, brought in to lead what was at one point in time play five and now really focused mm -hmm. on just uh, driving genesis cloud sales and adoption um, as it relates to WEM. cool and I, and I love that you've got that practical experience like in the contact center right so that you 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 were part of this workforce that we're going to talk about managing here as we go along uh so let me let me sort of we'll dive in so any organization that has employees is you know quote unquote managing them in some way so for the purposes of our conversation and to sort of ground our audience in, in what we're going to be chatting about, how do you define workforce engagement management and, and maybe touch a bit in your answer on the benefits of taking a more strategic approach to WEM? Yeah, so, so I think that WEM or workforce engagement management is a term that still to this day needs quite a bit of uh, clarity and uh, understanding. If you think back in time, it kind of started as workforce management. Then you heard the term workforce optimization or WFO. Now you hear the term WEM more often than not. But when I hear people talking about WEM, I still oftentimes hear more of a WFO or a WFM mindset when thinking about WEM. The thing I always like to remind people about is the, the key to workforce engagement management is in fact that term engagement. And it's, hmm. it, it's not just a thing. It's a it's a set of capabilities that historically have kind of lived on their own in their own silo. But we're at a point in time with technology and automation and capabilities that these things shouldn't be thought of as individual components. They really should be thought of as a true engagement platform, a workforce engagement management platform. So again, I like to remind people that when, when I'm talking about WEM here at Genesis Cloud, and this is you know something that's going to always change a little bit as we bring in new capabilities, it's not just those historical WFO components of recording quality and workforce management, but it's also performance management, gamification, learning, coaching, mobile apps, uh, speech and text analytics. So there's a lot that falls under that umbrella that make up when. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a really great place to sort of start us off with. Um, so as you touched on, WEM covers a lot of ground and aspects of it have been around for a long time, maybe done in silos. Um, and in, you know, maybe in a similar way, uh, there are lots of parts of an organization that, that are part of managing the workforce. You know, there's, there's the line management, there's the contact center folks, there's HR, et cetera. So what are the, the traditional roles that have been part of that WEM discussion? And, and how are you seeing that shift? And, and maybe, maybe more to the point, like how should that be shifting to encompass the totality of of, of WEM and making sure that the, the workforce is truly aligned and going in the right direction. Yeah, I, I think historically, the biggest challenge folks faced was they were kind of put in this position where they had to make a choice, you know, whether it was us or someone else, you would hear these stories about all of these great capabilities and how they play well um, together or how they complement one another. But at the end of the day, consumers were given this choice and, and what fits in budget, what fits in scope, what do I have, what's a nice to have versus a have to have. And I think the unique thing about where we're at with Genesis Cloud is that those customers who are coming onto Genesis actually have the ability to lean in and consume more of what they've actually uh, purchased, right? We've got a lot of folks who 
they're adopting things, but they're adopting them in a, in a pace that makes sense for them. But I actually think it's the one area where folks really can start to lean in more. Right? You, mm. You've got all these capabilities. They play well together now because we're not forcing you to pick what you like and we're giving you access to everything. I think now more than ever, you have the opportunity to really lean in and consume more capabilities that you have access to. And I think when we bring that back to that, you know, those traditional personas and that part of the question, we're not going to lose those traditional personas anytime soon, nor do we want to. But if you think about those traditional personas, you've got workforce managers, quality admins, supervisors, team leads. And again, they're going to continue to be important parts of the conversation. What I'd like to get away from uh, and where I, where I do see these personas evolving, there was a point in time when the WFM persona made the decision for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is the historically the one <laughs> of the most power. But I am actually starting to see quality analysts coming to the table with WFM uh, administrators or schedules and schedulers and forecasters. I'm seeing supervisors and team leads come to the table and they're all carrying the same amount of weight and they're all focused on how these things working together are going to make for a better overall experience. Yeah. And again, that engaged component becomes important because the more that experience is really designed to cater to those agents, they're going to have a better experience. They're going to be more engaged. They're going to be more engaged when they're talking to your customers. They're going to be more engaged when they're talking to your WFM planners and your quality team. Yeah. The interesting thing though, I think is we have this evolution occurring in these personas Again, we're going to continue to have those traditional personas, the planners, the schedulers, the speech analysts, et cetera. But we're really starting to see because of the influx of AI, we're starting to see more folks coming into the WEM persona conversation who have that technical background, who are data scientists, who are uh, folks who are capable of building complex reports using APIs. And again, these mm -hmm. are folks who used to be kind of excluded from the conversation in early days and would only come in on an as need basis. Yeah. And now we're seeing them very much front and center as a part of the standard conversation. Yeah, it's so fascinating to see how, you know, AI specifically, but just, you know, as these fields and these practices evolve, right? Like they, they do tend to become more robust and that does lead to those better outcomes that you were, you were touching on. Um, so, so you said that the, the magic two letter word AI, uh, so it has entered the, the WEM conversation. Why, you know, AI is so in the conversation and has been for such a, such a while now. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's a set of capabilities that make existing practices and existing tools better in, in so many ways, right? It's not its own thing as such. It's, it's, you know, we can use AI to improve these practices and these capabilities. Um, talk a little bit about how you see AI doing that when it comes to WEM, sort of both from a, a, a tool perspective, you know, Genesis Cloud and the sort of the things that we make, but also how it's helping people with their strategies when, when they think about workforce engagement management. Yeah, I, I would say that in, in the world of WEM, and this is uh, predates WAM and goes back to the world of WFO and, and, and even maybe predates that. But the capabilities that live underneath that, that WAM umbrella we talked about historically been very manual area or areas with a lot of very manual work. Uh, I always talk about the scaffolding that people build outside of things like workforce management. You know, you can sit down and have a great tool you can showcase everything it can do, but just inherently the way, a lot of workforce planners operate and I myself was one of them and I'm guilty. We want to build all this scaffolding. We want to create some killer spreadsheets with great pivot tables and some reports that don't necessarily sit inside of the tool. We've got mm. same thing with speech. We'll do a lot of stuff outside of speech as we're analyzing. things. So the point to that is that you have this world that has historically had a lot of manual intervention. There has for a long time been a lot of automation capabilities available across the, the WEM um, uh, ecosystem. And I have seen that from the, from the WEM side of things, a lot of those personas we talked about previously, they've been hesitant to adopt a lot of automation. They'll adopt mm -hmm. some automation, but then they'll usually wrap two or three manual processes around it to make sure that it's right and we, we trust it and, you know, it, and, and by accident, they create a set of processes that are both automated and manual kind of working together. 
So I, I can tell you a few years back when AI started becoming a more prevalent part of conversations, I was seeing a lot of that hesitancy still continue to live inside of these conversations. People were looking at things and going, well, what's really AI? But obviously we hit that tipping point where it's now it's here and, and people mm -hmm. are fighting it. People are embracing these conversations. And I think that's what makes WEM such a special place to have an AI conversation. Because again, if you think about how much we've done historically that is very manual, all that scaffolding that gets built, whether it's around WFM or quality or speech, performance, you have an opportunity to look at that low hanging fruit, those areas that take a lot of time where we're spending a lot of energy or a lot of cycles, or we're creating a lot of manual work. And we really can look at ways to automate those things. And you're going to start to see a lot of that um, as we develop a lot of our AI capabilities. And some of them are already out there now, but that, that notion of leaning in. And I guess mm -hmm. the biggest example I have in, in recent uh, memory is a lot of the forecasting stuff. If you think of WFM in the forecasting world, typically very manual. A lot of people do all of their forecasting in Excel. They'll put it back into whatever tool they're using so they can get some, some patterns and some distribution models that are kind of hard to manually adjust. And they'll bring it right back into their spreadsheet and they'll, they'll go right back into manual mode. Um, I didn't think that was a place I would ever see people really truly walk away from uh, and, and embrace automation and embrace adoption uh, of new technology. But what I'm seeing since we released our AI powered forecasting is folks really are leaning into it. I think there was a there was a point where they had to be, you know, that that trust had to be proven out and they had to see that the forecasts we were generating and creating were, in fact, clo as close to accurate as anything they could do without all of the manual head, uh, headache. And now they're able to repurpose that manual time that they were spending in other areas. And so I think you'll continue to see a lot of that happen as AI begins to, con well, continues to permeate across all of the things under that WEM umbrella. Yeah. So, so just follow up on an aspect of that. I love, I love your metaphor of, of scaffolding, right? Because if you think about a building, you know, when you're, when you're constructing it, you put the scaffolding around it and then, you know, hopefully eventually the building stands on its own, the scaffolding comes down and, and sort of people get on with using the building. So to use that, that metaphor, if, if the, the, the WEM capabilities are the building around which the scaffolding is being built, what does it take for people to have the kind of comfort that you were just talking about to bring the scaffolding down? Is it, is it a, a process question? Is it a tool comfort question? Is it a cultural question? Like, what, like how do we bring down the scaffolding, Rob? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Next question. No, it's uh, <laughs> exactly right. It, it's, so the thing is, I, I can tell you more than anything, it's about having trust in the output. You're, ne you're never going to walk away from what you're doing unless you see that the results of this other um, approach are as good or better than what you've been doing. Hmm. So th that trust has to be there. Some of the, the mistakes I've seen people make, at least in the early days, was they would, they would run a forecast one time and immediately go, well, that's not accurate, and then they walk away from it and not actually vet this thing out. And again, I'm using the forecast um, story because that's what we just ended on. But I've seen folks do that where they go, we've run this forecast one time. It's not as accurate and we're not we're not happy with this. We're not going to use it. Hmm. But they forget, oh, there's a lot of manual touch and adjustment we did to this other thing. So I, what I've seen is the folks who take some time to run these things in parallel, compare the results, see what's happening. They've been able to dial it in and get it to a point where they go, this actually is accurate and here's how it's driving a better set of results. And here's where I can use that time to go elsewhere. But yeah. again, more than anything, it's about that, that trust uh, in, in the output of the data. Think, same thing on the quality side. You know, we, we've got a lot of folks who are using uh, evaluation assistance, um, which is one of our quality features where, you know, it's automatically answering questions for you using the topics that have been created. That's one of those things that, you know, when folks first started using it in those early days, there was a lot of, is this good? Is this not good? Is it hearing the right thing? Is it not hearing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And as our transcriptions have gotten stronger and our accuracy has gotten better and the conversations that the tool has had an opportunity to listen to have gotten stronger, you're seeing people actually lean into and leverage more of the evaluation assistance components simply because instead of doing, say, three evals per agent per month or five evals per agent per month in a random sampling approach, 
Now they're able to do that and add five additional that are more targeted based on some type of outcome from speech. So it's really about seeing it in action, figuring out how to work with it in the environment that you've created within the processes and the walls that you've put up and then figure out how do we get from A to B? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Cause you know, to use another phrase you said earlier, right. It's, you know, trust, but verify, you got to lean into these things and see what works. Uh, but, but don't give up, right. Stay with it because it, the benefits going to be there in, in the long haul. Um, so let's, let's shift the focus a little bit to, to where the, the industry is going and, and what people need to be thinking about. So when you think about that future state of, of WAM, what are the challenges that, that you see and that you hear from the organizations that you work with that they're facing as they try to evolve to that future state of, of WAM? Yeah, I, I think the first thing that just pops right into my mind is that conversation that we were having earlier around mm -hmm. that new persona that's more focused on API development. When you think mm -hmm. about a platform like Genesis Cloud, everything's API first. So everything we build has an API. Uh, I have had a number of conversations where a customer goes, man, I wish that I had this thing. And I go, well, it's there because the API is there. You can absolutely do that. We might not have put that in there for you, but what you're trying to accomplish, you can absolutely knock out. And with the right skill set and the right person with the right um, understanding of how to work with our APIs, you could have it in a matter of hours. So I think that that API persona is mm. a bigger part of the conversation. Um, I actually, th there was a point in time in my past when I would tend to exclude them from the conversation. When a customer said, hey, who should, who should be in this conversation? Who should we invite? It was typically someone who wasn't part of a natural invite because they really just wanted to figure out how are we getting at this data? But now I think it's not just about how do we get at the data, and it's now about how do we get that data and make it do something really powerful for us. So again, mm -hmm. I think that that persona is becoming much more front and center. We're having many more conversations with them. And instead of them being this, you know, this group of people who sit in the corner building and are only asked for uh, from when, when something's needed, they're now actually a part of every conversation. And that's beautiful because you don't know what they're capable of uh, building and creating. So to be able to have someone who can hear what you're talking about, understand the back end of it and go, oh, yeah, 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 we can build that. That is a conversation that is becoming far more common. Um, and when people say, who should we invite? I'm, I'm saying you should include your BI team or you should include, you know, if you have an API person on your team who is supporting you in any of the efforts you have, they should be there from the beginning, not just invited on a per per need basis. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the other thing that I sort of hear in that is, that there's there's this continuing mind shift that needs to 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 continue um, around the idea that these the these tools are just more sophisticated. They're all in one. They have a lot of capabilities, and they do have that openness, right? That you're talking about with the APIs and and the cloud is continually delivering new features. And if you're not thinking about what does our future state look like if you're not thinking about how do I continually sort of adopt this newness and this new goodness to to sort of better my business? Um, you, you know, you're, you're leaving so much on the table in terms of what's possible. A absolutely. Uh, you're leaving a lot on the table. Uh, and again, I, I think, look, it's no secret, you know, we have a lot of conversations with folks who are 40 year veteran, I'm sorry, 30 year veterans of workforce management. And they've been using the same advanced tool for as long as they've been in the space. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are, um, you know, less than five, uh, less than 10 years old in Genesis Cloud. So when you talk about a tool that's been created, that's evolving fast and rapidly, and you compare that to something that's 30, 40 years old, obviously there's going to be disparities. The difference is that because of the approach we've taken, because that of that API first approach, because of the way we're looking at AI and saying, how can AI take a lot of this traditional manual stuff and just get that off of your plate, but make yeah. you feel comfortable that what we're giving you is accurate. Because of that, you know, we're, we're, we've got a rapidly ascending roadmap where we're adding features every week. We're giving people the ability to look at those, decide, are we going to put, put this out to the field now? Is this something we want to sit on and better understand? but you're, you're forcing folks to be able to look at these things and think about how can we use this creatively 
Um, what are the things that we feel like maybe we're missing and how can we partner with someone like Genesis to come up with a creative, creative solution to our need, whether that's something that's traditional in, in, in the WEM ecosystem or something that's new and thoughtful that no one's ever explored. So yeah. I think the nice thing is that the platform, the way it's structured, the way we look at WEM, it's structured to do just that, right? We're, yeah. we're giving people that WEM experience that they've had, uh, but we're giving you the ability to start really thinking about all of the things you can automate. And again, we're bringing to the conversation all the things that we're capable of doing with AI. And, and again, you think about something as simple as listening to a conversation. Uh, say you're playing back a recording, but you know it's in a different language and you need to quickly understand it. To be able to use something like AI to translate that quickly for me so I can hear what's going on, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and and again, so much of that is is just the beauty of the cloud, right? These things continually evolve, and you get to sort of improve without all the cost and complexity and sort of integration headaches that, that used to come with sort of on-prem and sort of these monolithic solutions. Um, so, so this has been a great conversation. We could talk about this all all morning, but but we have to bring it to a close, sadly. Uh, so for folks who are watching and who are on their own kind of journey around workforce engagement management, what do you think they should be looking at um, over the next couple of years? You know, strategies or trends or technology, like what, what's, what, what should they be really paying attention to and thinking about? I think for me, the biggest thing that, and I've actually had a number of customers ask me this very question, you know, what should we be thinking about? What, what? even folks who aren't our customers, but who are just talking with us and and, and talking with others across this ecosystem, they, they say, what should we be thinking about? I, I think there's a couple of things that just jump out right off the page. First off, again, AI is here. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to continue to get better and better, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So really got to look at those things that are manual, whether it's the manual approach we took to our historical quality uh, process, whether it's the, the way we've scheduled for the last 20 years or the way we've tried to do old school bidding or, you know, why question things like, you know, we, well, we've had these 12 KPIs, but why have we had them? And what, what is the value that those, uh, the results of that KPI is giving me? It's really about questioning everything, looking at the way AI is going to be able to step in and take some of that off the plate, making a plan and a strategy for how you're going to look at it, develop trust in it, because you're going to want to adopt it. So it's not just about turning it on and going yes or no. This is about understanding what is it doing? Why is it doing what it's doing? Can we yeah. get the results we need? And what does it do for us? You know, again, I think about all those manual areas that live across the entirety of the WEM ecosystem. There's a lot of time spent doing tedious, monotonous things that if AI can take off your plate, now you've got these folks with this great skill set that understand your right. business and understand your world. How can we put them to work to better service what we're doing? And I, and I do think what you're going to see is a lot of folks really leaning into the analytics side of when we've always had analytics out there, people running reports, people looking at data, but I think people being able to look at that data and understand it better and also have a tool like us, that's going to have AI that's going to surface that data. So you're not having to go on a treasure hunt to find something that might be important. So yeah. there's a lot going on. So from a trend standpoint, it's really going to be about that next level of automation and AI, which for an industry that has historically been somewhat hesitant to lean into anything that's not a part of the, the scaffolding, mm. it's going to be a big step for some folks. Yeah, no, I love that. And uh, and you're right. It's it, AI is not going away. It's only going to get more powerful and it's going to just really help simplify so many of those things that are just you know painful today. Um, well, that is all the time we have for today. Um, Robert, thank you so much for joining us here in the green room and bringing your expertise and perspective. Thanks to all of you who have been watching and, and joining along. Uh, please like and share the show, and uh, we'll see you next time in the CX Green Room. Thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody.